Japan is an archipelago. Its four largest islands make up 95% of the landmass. The remaining 5% is spread over 7,000 other islands. Some of these are seldom visited and remain almost pristine. These breathtaking landscapes show a different side to Japan. We're going to explore four of these islands, amongst the most beautiful and emblematic of the land of the rising sun. Taketomi is a little paradise on the China Sea where life still follows age-old Japanese traditions. Hiriomote at the southern tip of the archipelago is virtually unexplored. Yakushima is a mysterious island whose spectacular landscapes include extraordinary forests peopled by trees that are over a thousand years old. Miyajima is the sacred island, birthplace of Japanese Buddhism, where the Japanese come to reconnect with their history and their traditions. Welcome to the little known islands of Japan. Like a piece of confetti floating off the coast of Okinawa, 2,000 kilometers south of Tokyo, this island is unique in Japan. At its center sits a small village whose traditional style houses create a deliciously old-fashioned atmosphere. The island of Taketomi is flat, but to get an overview, you can climb the little concrete observation tower, which rises to a height of four and a half meters. There's only room for two, so you have to patiently await your turn. For those with a head for heights, the views are stunning. Taketomi is the only village in the whole of the Okinawa region to have kept its traditional red tiled roofs and its walls of volcanic stone. Nothing has changed here for centuries. Even cars are forbidden. That's why all Japanese people dream of coming here one day. It's a vision of a timeless, rural Japan in which life is calm and simple, a far cry from the hubbub of today's big cities. Just over 300 people live here all year round, and they make every effort to keep their little paradise intact. This is the island's only restaurant, it's a pleasant place to stop off and taste the local specialities before setting off to explore the streets of coral sand, which wind amongst the small wooden houses. This is where the buffalo cart comes into its own. To the slow rhythm of these powerful beasts, the cart driver sings a traditional Okinawa song. Visitors are immediately immersed in the unique atmosphere of this island at the end of the world. Lulled by the slow and easy pace of life and by the sound of the shanshin, a kind of banjo that's a traditional instrument on the island. driver is a former farmer who started a new life as a tourist guide, along with his water buffalo. He tells the story of a forgotten island which almost lost its entire population. A 
I lived on Takitomi until I was 18. At that time, there were over 1,500 inhabitants. But on this little island, there was no work for young people. So they left to find work elsewhere. Consequently, the population fell to 200. At the end of the Second World War, you no longer needed permission to come to Okinawa. And since then, more and more tourists have come to visit. But the only ones left on the island were old people. They were too old to welcome the tourists. The youngest person on the island was 70 years of age. So, the young people came back to the island to help them. And now Takitomi has 350 inhabitants. There has been a real renaissance on the island thanks to the influx of tourists. There's even a primary school and a secondary school with 41 pupils. But the little island in the China Sea remains very cut off when the tourist season is over. For supplies, the people here rely on deliveries from the neighboring island, which is 15 minutes away by boat, if the weather is good. We don't have a supermarket here, just four little shops. How do you do your shopping? The shops here sell only drinks and ice cream. So we do our shopping on the neighboring island of Ishigaki. The streets of coral sand are an immaculate, creamy white. So when the buffalo needs to go in the middle of a guided tour, the driver collects the precious fertilizer. That's it, all done. Comical scenes like these are much appreciated by the Japanese tourists. This one must be incontinent. Some buffalo take longer than five minutes to pass water. I hope this one isn't going to take that long. Not finished yet. OK, off we go. If the buffalo takes too long, you start getting traffic jams. Come on, gee up, put your back into it. There are so many visitors in high season that even 2,000 kilometers from Tokyo, you still get traffic jams on the streets of Takatomi. The tourists come above all to admire the island's unusual architecture, in particular, the tiled roofs, which are home to strange monsters. Before, each house had a Buddhist altar in the center of the living room, and on the roof, you can see the shisa. It's always placed one and a half meters in front of the altar. The shisa protects the house from demons. The shisa are mythical creatures from Okinawa. Half lion, half dog, they're usually red or white. They have rather angry expressions, no doubt to chase away evil spirits. These imaginary beings are believed to bring their owners good luck and prosperity. They're even supposed to keep storms and typhoons at bay. The Shisa are also an inspiration to local artists. Behind this bank of hibiscus is a small pottery workshop. Inside, there's an exhibition of kamis, joyful and grotesque characters who are the island's guardian angels. The island has a rich and unique culture. 
the inhabitants have only been considered Japanese since the 19th century. Nevertheless, they still speak a dialect which is close to traditional Japanese. In order to remain self-sufficient through the centuries, the islanders developed a unique skill, weaving cloth made from plant fibers. Inside this traditional house is a collection of rare pieces, a cultural treasure trove that is carefully preserved. This cloth was made for the exclusive use of the imperial family. But in Taketomi there is no silk and no cotton. The cloth is made only from organic materials found on the island, banana leaves, reeds and bamboo, with very ancient techniques handed down from generation to generation. In the workshop, 100-year-old looms are still in use. The cloth is so delicate, each centimeter requires several days' work. The thread is dyed by boiling it with wood bark or with natural dyes made from flowers. The result is magnificent subtle and elegant gradations of color. Buying a piece of precious Takitomi cloth is very difficult and prices reach staggering proportions, several thousand dollars for a kimono belt. The buffalo cart has almost arrived at its destination. Just a little more effort. We're almost at the end of the tour. The buffalo has picked up the pace. He knows we're nearly home. For the valiant buffalo, it's time for a well-deserved shower. The last ferry will soon be leaving. The tourists take a last turn around the sandy lanes and pathways to savor the charms of Taketomi. And on the horizon, another island comes into view, Iriomote. From the jetty on the island of Ishigaki, south of Okinawa, ferries are waiting to take passengers to Iriomote, a wild and untamed territory on the distant frontiers of the Japanese archipelago. Taiwan is only 200 kilometers from here as the bird flies. This island, covering 300 square kilometers, is a land of steep mountains and impenetrable jungle. Half an hour later, we arrive on Iriomote. Only 2,000 people live here all year round, strung out along the island's only main road, which hugs the eastern coast. This is Japan's only tropical island. It's a promise of adventure for the few tourists who venture this far south. The best way to explore Iriomote is to rent a kayak and to paddle your way up the broad river into the jungle's interior. These students from Tokyo are clambering into flimsy canoes. A guide is on hand to teach them how to paddle without capsizing. <laughs> For these city dwellers, the wild landscape of Iriomote is a taste of extreme adventure. <laughs> Coming face to face with nature far from the comforts of Japan's ultra-modern cities is an unforgettable experience. Time for some carefree relaxation on the water. 
they are all secretly hoping for a glimpse of the island's most famous inhabitant, an extremely rare animal found only on Iriomote, whose lair is in the heart of the jungle. It's a wild cat. It's known as Yamaneko, which means cat of the mountains. Larger than a domestic cat, it's usually about 70 centimeters long and weighs five kilos. It feeds on frogs, reptiles, birds, and of course, mice. The Yamaneko belongs to the leopard family, and sadly, it's on the critically endangered list. No more than a hundred of the animals are left in the wild. You can see it in photographs, on information boards, as a cartoon character, a sculpture, or a car sticker. Its picture is everywhere, even on the buses. The cat has become the island's symbol. But it remains very shy. Nobody has actually seen one in the last 10 years. The only way to take one home with you is to buy a cuddly toy as a souvenir. The Yamaneko is unusual in that it likes water. In fact, it's an excellent swimmer. Its hunting ground is the Urauchi River. Tourists who are not keen on kayaking can take a cruise through the mangroves. The captain is also a guide who provides a commentary throughout the trip and shares his passion for nature with his passengers. Here we're on the Urauchi River. I will describe it to you. It is 19 kilometers long and, at its broadest, 200 meters wide. It is the longest river in the Okinawa region. It varies enormously in depth, between 1 meter and 15 meters in the deepest areas. There are freshwater fish and marine fish. In all, the river is home to 400 different species of fish. On your left, you can see the mangrove forest. These grow in a mixture of seawater and freshwater. These swampy areas are called chukantai. Life in the mangroves follows the rhythm of the tides. The Urauchi River stretches into the heart of Iriomote. The pristine tropical forest stretches as far as the eye can see, a unique landscape found nowhere else in Japan. We've arrived at our destination. The boat leaves immediately and won't be back until exactly four hours later. Our adventure-seeking hikers must ensure that they don't miss the only return trip. No one is allowed to remain behind or to leave the one path that winds through the jungle. Here's our departure point. We meet the group of students who've stopped to cool off before confidently setting off to conquer the forest. Only 20% of the island is accessible. After a good hour of walking, the object of the adventure appears, the Mariudo Falls. Beyond this point is the hunting ground of the Yamaneko cat. From the viewing platform, we can admire the last virgin territory on the archipelago. The Japanese come here to breathe in the atmosphere at the heart of this remote and magnificent landscape, which has remained unchanged since time immemorial.
Iriomote remained almost uninhabited until the end of the Second World War. The inhabitants of Okinawa took refuge on this lost island, which was infested by mosquitoes. After the war, the American forces stationed in the region eradicated malaria from the island. Gradually, Iriomote's population grew as fishermen came to harvest its rich waters, teeming with fish and with many varieties of shellfish. In recent years, however, with the economic crisis, this forgotten island has attracted more and more Japanese who have fled the big city to lead a quiet life closer to nature. Amongst the fishermen on the beach is this former English teacher who gave up everything for a new life in paradise. It's really good. <laughs> sure. Do you know this? Yeah. <laughs> it's called Illumina. Illumina, yeah. You can find this kind of shell only in the season. Yeah, only in March or April. Mm. Just just boiled. <laughs> yeah with the salt water, like this seaweed. It's, it's called a mozuku. Yeah. Good Is it good for your health? Yeah. Mm. Good for your smoke. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I came here last year. I just moved from Tokyo. Uh -huh. Yeah, took my job and then started to live here. Because oh, wow. <laughs> I love the nature. Yeah, and like fishing and canoeing, like diving. Actually, I'm a diving instructor. Yeah, and Eric, I'm working here. Iriomote is one of the last remaining paradise islands in Japan. Its stunning beaches of fine white sand and crystal clear waters are largely overlooked by the travel agencies. It's no doubt because access is so difficult that these island dwellers enjoy almost perfect peace and quiet. A small prop plane is coming into land on a legendary and mysterious island at the southern tip of Japan. Through the window, we can already make out its craggy landscape where the mountain tops meet the clouds. Welcome to Yakushima the island of the thousand-year-old trees. This volcanic island is home to a mountain range which rises to almost 2,000 meters above sea level. The impressive range is known as the Alps of the Ocean. The climate changes from subtropical at the foot of the mountains to subarctic at the top. It's a unique ecosystem which was classed as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in 1993. They say that it rains here eight days a week. Humidity levels are twice as high here as in the rest of Japan. That's why the forests of Yakushima have such a rare and remarkable beauty. But the many hundreds of tourists who visit each year come above all to see the trees, some of which are several thousand years old. What makes them so special is not only their great age, but the fact that each one has a name. Eiji Okamoto takes us to meet them. He's a former trapper who went to live in the far north of the United States, but on his return, he fell in love with these extraordinary leafy giants. 
There is a tree here called the Jomonsugi. It's been estimated at 2,170 years old, but some people say it is 7,200 years old. It's an enormous cedar. Because it rains all year long in Yakushima, the cedars grow very slowly and their growth rings are very close together. The reason the old trees in this forest can survive for such a long time is that they grow so slowly. These are their names, Kigensugi, Yayoisugi, Jomonsugi, Dayusugi. To admire these giants, you have to go to an area known as Yakusugi land, named after this exceptionally old species of cedar. Here is one of the forest's oldest inhabitants. This tree is aged between 1,500 and 2,000 years old. Its name is Nanahonsugi. It is called that because it has seven main branches growing out from the trunk. Yakushima is the only place in Japan where you find such old trees. This forest remained untouched until the 16th century. At that time, there was famine on the island, and so the inhabitants decided to start cutting down the ancient trees and selling them to rich lords. The Yakusugi cedars were in great demand because it was said they remained resistant to decay for several centuries. Today, only about 10 of the trees are left. But the island's distinctive climate means that an unusual phenomenon is taking place, regrowth. New trees have appeared on the stumps of the giants that were felled centuries ago. These young cedars are almost 500 years old. This untamed landscape seems to encompass all of Japan's natural beauty in one immense panorama. The scenery brings to mind the delicate colors of wonderful Japanese prints. The water that flows and cascades down these river gorges in the middle of the forest is crystal clear, and it's renowned throughout Japan for its purity. It feels good wandering along the many signposted paths that crisscross Yakushima. These shrubs adorned with red flowers are Japanese camellias. In spring, their flowers are spectacular. Home to almost 2,000 recorded plant species, many of which are rare and found nowhere else on Earth, Yakushima's environmental heritage is exceptional. One of the most popular hiking routes starts at an altitude of over a thousand meters. It climbs the Shiratani Valley. In the river's deep pools lives a bird who's completely at home in the water. It nests under the waterfalls and dives courageously into the swirling rock pools. The bird you've just seen is called Kawagarasu, the brown dipper of Yakushima. They feed on all sorts of insects that they find at the bottom of the river. They nest on the river and they dive headfirst into the water and they can swim underwater. They catch insects while swimming with the current. It's very rare to see one. Tourists are very happy when they see one. At 1,500 meters above sea level, we're in deer country. They're quite tame and seem to be completely unconcerned by the presence of the tourists. 
Man is their only predator, and no one hunts them here. There are more deer than people on Yakushima. Totaling more than 20,000, their numbers are beginning to cause problems and could prove damaging to the forest. The higher we go, the more the landscape is covered in moss. It clings to the trees, covers the stones, and spreads over the vegetation. When you look closely, each patch of moss resembles a miniature garden. The moss helps to protect and nourish the forest's soil and to prevent its erosion. The presence of many different kinds of moss is a sign of a pollution-free environment and the island has hundreds of different species of moss. Their leaves, which vary in color from soft green to orangey brown, capture the humidity in the air and play a major role in purifying the water. Drop by drop, they feed the thousands of streams which tumble down the slopes and gorges of the Alps of the ocean. After a three-hour walk, we reach the heart of the Sheratani Valley and the Unsuikyo Ravine. A path made of tree roots transports us into the magical universe of Miyazaki, whose animated films have won international acclaim. Eiji is one of the director's fans. On Yakushima, in one year, we get between 8,000 and 10,000 millimeters of rainfall. That represents 8 to 10 meters of water. It's thanks to this abundant rainfall that the forest is so beautiful. And the trees which make up the forest are hardy and very green. In the well-known animated film, Princess Mononoke, you can see the famous moss of the Yakushima forest, and the tourists come to Yakushima especially to admire its magnificent moss-covered woodland. The forest here seems to belong to another world, a fairy tale land inhabited by the spirits of trees. The emerald green moss covers everything in this landscape, the twisted trees, their vast trunks wreathed in creepers, and the huge rocks which seem to have been flung down by giants. The dim light and muffled sounds of the deep forest create a hushed atmosphere that feels both strange and magical. It's as though the spirit of the forest is hiding behind the almost too perfect stillness. The locals say that the mountain god comes down into the valley once a year, taking on the appearance of a princess in a white kimono. As if to lend weight to the legend, this root has grown in the shape of a heart. Yakushima is also an island of fishermen. Off its shores, they catch flying fish, one of the region's specialities. As evening falls, at the mouth of the river Anbu, the shell pickers return to the village with their day's harvest. In this little village at the foot of the mountains, the pace of life is calm and unchanging. Here in Anbu, nothing seems to have changed for decades. But recently, some new arrivals have settled in. City people seeking a more easy-going way of life. They've opened restaurants and cafes. Apart from tourism, the main activity on the island is carpentry. This workshop belongs to Takenuchi Tokiharu. 
he's carrying on the family tradition of making small everyday objects such as boxes and chopping boards. On rare occasions, he works with yakusugi wood from thousand-year-old cedars. The wood of the yakusugi is very fine. Its color is magnificent. It contains a lot of natural essences. Some of them contain no natural essence, however. In fact, each cedar is complex and unique. It's against the law to fell a yakusugi, so it's only when a tree dies that it's possible to use its wood. Each piece that comes out of this workshop is unique and precious. If you have an object made of yakusugi wood, to keep it in good condition, you must never use wax. To take off any dust, you just need to rub it with your hand, and the cedar wood will immediately start to shine again. This magnificent work of art, perfectly polished, has been created from a cedar that was at least 1,000 years old. This piece is worth over a hundred thousand dollars. It's a piece of the enchanted forest of Yakushima. The setting sun sets the mysterious island aglow. As night falls, the spirit of the forest takes possession of the island once again. Five hundred kilometers further north, near Hiroshima, this little ferry takes passengers to the holy island of Miyajima. Thousands of Japanese visit each year because it's an important pilgrimage site for Buddhists. Miyajima is known as Shrine Island because an important episode in Japanese history took place here. The first thing tourists do when they get off the ferry is to visit the town's main street, which has kept a charmingly old-fashioned air. It's a 1950s-style shopping arcade with gift shops selling all sorts of souvenirs, such as these Japanese dolls. Miyajima's restaurants have an excellent reputation, and their menus abound with traditional dishes and local specialities, such as barbecued oysters. This variety has been cultivated here for more than 3,000 years. Delicious cakes are also on offer, shaped like maple leaves and stuffed with sweet bean paste. The locals here have been shopkeepers for generations and have the reputation of being friendly and welcoming. They've gained the experience over the centuries as the pilgrims have come to visit. It was over 1400 years ago that the island became a major religious center with the construction of the famous Itsukushima Shrine. The shrine is sacred to followers of Shinto, Japan's most ancient religion. Shintoism is essentially polytheistic and is practiced by about three quarters of Japan's population. It's a belief system based above all on the divinity of nature and thus on a profound respect for the natural world. The Itsukushima Shrine has remained very popular. It was built over a period of 500 years between the 6th and 12th centuries. During this period, the Japanese emperor and his court made regular visits to the shrine, which became a political center and was the object of violent battles. Despite the many fires which have marked its history, it is remarkably well preserved.
set down on the beach with its slender wooden structures, roofs of finely crafted tiles and bright red columns and bridges, its unique architecture has earned it World Heritage Site status from UNESCO. Miyajima is a land of traditions. At the center of the shrine is a stage for which the program has remained unchanged since the 14th century. The audience of connoisseurs have come to watch no theater. The style of the play is slow and ritualized, according to the ancient tradition, as this is a sacred art. Originally, it was performed as part of a Shinto ritual. No theater is peopled by shoguns and samurai, princesses and courtesans. These poetic dramas speak of tragic love affairs, family conflicts and fantastical legends. They're often nostalgic in tone. The main character always wears a mask, which could represent a child, an old man, or a woman. The play lasts for hours, but the atmosphere is not necessarily one of meditative contemplation. The audience settle in comfortably on their straw mats, and as the play unfolds, they drink tea and talk among friends. Coming to Miyajima is an occasion for the Japanese to share their traditions. It's also an unmissable opportunity to take a selfie on the pontoon, which stretches out to sea. There are queues for the perfect photo spot. The aim is to take home a photo of this huge, bright red tori. The gigantic gateway of solid wood is the symbol of Miyajima. A tori has guarded the entrance to the sacred island for the last 800 years. The parts of the columns that are underwater are replaced every 10 years to reduce the damage caused by the seawater. The rest of the island is practically uninhabited. The forest is untouched because it's illegal to fell the trees. Emerging through the treetops are the roofs of the numerous temples that dot the hillsides. There are almost a thousand places of worship, shrines and pagodas. Hidden amongst the pine and maple trees is the magnificent temple of Daisho In. We're at the foot of Mount Misen. The holy mountain rises 535 meters above sea level. To get to the top, you can take the cable car. As the car climbs slowly but surely upwards, the Bay of Hiroshima comes into view. From the top, you can admire the numerous islands in the bay. Such as Nomijima and its magnificent empty beaches. Some of the islands are still uninhabited and completely natural.
It's from Mount Misen that the pilgrims set off. For it was here in the 6th century that a Japanese monk came back from China, bringing with him a new religion, Buddhism. He chose this island, already venerated by Shintoists, to share the new teachings. The paths are dotted with shrines containing small statues of gods who are believed to protect the souls of children. The statues are often adorned with a bracelet, a red bib, or with a bonnet belonging to a deceased child. This little temple is dedicated to these gods. The stone steps lead up to the entrance of the holy path. This is protected by two wooden giants, the guardian kings. With their warlike features and fierce expressions, they are said to ward off evil spirits. After a good hour of walking, we arrive at Miyajima's most highly venerated temple, the Misen Hondu. Built in the 11th century by a disciple of the founding monk, this temple is typical of the Shingon school, an esoteric branch of Japanese Buddhism. The Buddha is in the Chinese style. On either side are the demon guardians. and the statue of King Tamonen, guardian of the temple. It is said that the great shoguns and feudal lords came here to meditate and to absorb the spiritual power of the place. But Mount Misen is home to other kinds of temples where even more ancient beliefs and superstitions are kept alive. This is the Temple of the Eternal Flame, known as Kietsu no Hi. The founding monk, Daishi Kukai, is said to have lit the sacred flame over 1400 years ago, and it has kept burning ever since. The flame has become a symbol of eternal love. People come here to declare their love for each other or to pray for a happy marriage. The tradition is to leave a prayer or a wish inscribed on these wooden ex voto. At the top of the stone steps is another temple, the only one of its kind in Japan, the Sankido. Here, it's the demons that are venerated. Their speciality is exorcism. Despite their frightening faces and big noses, they are said to bring good luck and wisdom to those who invoke their powers. The Japanese come here to pray for a happy home or for a successful business. They bring bottles of alcohol as offerings. Coming back down Mount Misen, we can see the port and the old town of Miyajima. At the center is a tower dedicated to the Medicine Buddha, one of the few in Japan to have five stories. Next to it is the Itsukushima Temple. The magnificent red tori seems to float as the sun sets over the bay. As the day comes to an end, the tourists wouldn't for the world miss this last photo opportunity with the giant wooden structure. Taketomi, Iriomote, Yakushima and Miyajima, 
These four magnificent islands are a gateway into a mysterious little-known side of Japan. They take the traveler on an exhilarating and unforgettable journey into the natural and spiritual landscape of Japan. And each island, in its own way, reveals some of the country's soul.